for shorter flights because you know just being in the air too long isn't necessarily the most interesting thing it's it's the landing that is the interesting challenge so what i was thinking we would do to start off with is fly from from the west coast of scotland here to somewhere in the south of england stop there and then our next flight will go fly to i i don't know you know maybe uh maybe the southwest of france and then maybe we stop uh somewhere in the south of spain somewhere like that and then cut through so we don't we don't need a full load of fuel i'm thinking we're going to start stop somewhere in the the sort of south of england you guys have a request we could go to brussels but it's a little out of the way and we flew around brussels yesterday so i thought maybe not so much oh what we could do um if i go hold on if i punch in uh the final destination airports again this is not where we're going today but if we punch in the final destination airport if we're doing a, th a straight shot although it is nicely curved because of the earth we can see what airports we would naturally fly over and so maybe what we want to do is choose something that we'd more or less be flying over if we were doing a straight shot because it would mean the least detour england south coast hastings to see if the normans are landing 1066 yes make gibraltar a stop yeah we might i uh i did do a, a flight on my own the other day which was uh gibraltar to uh i went to tangiers uh which the atc calls tangier which entertained me to uh non-stop here mm -hmm. would hitting every capital on the way be an option um i mean sort of we could land at one of the london airports and then go to charles de gaulle which i mean wouldn't be well, i mean it would still be a pretty decent length flight um and then from there i don't know what that would look like so like uh we could just land maybe uh in mallorca or something i mean i know it's not a capital but that would be kind of interesting we could do something like that i mean switzerland is getting well now it's a fair bit out of the way so i don't think that's going to be the plan unless unless we change it to something else so the other thing i was thinking is something like yeah maybe we start at lisbon or faro or something like that go east to something like alicante then jump to mallorca and then land somewhere over here somewhere i don't know which of the two islands and then drop off somewhere in italy and then keep going east that was the other idea but the sort of air to air sort of sounds right yeah the savoy huh god savoy if do we just commit to all the eu4 sort of uh great points well tell you what let's not worry about that for now let's land let's pick something in the south of england to land at i don't know if i want to do heathrow i think i'd like to, to showcase something else anyone in chat from uh from somewhere <laughs> any of you from anywhere hastings so you live in southampton london city airport oh no that actually might be interesting you know what that actually is kind of interesting Plus, I mean, we actually did not do a flyover. Oh, man, they've got everything. Tower of London, Tower Bridge, the Shard. We haven't actually done London. So maybe London City Airport actually makes a great deal of sense, doesn't it? Um, I think it's supposed to be quite a steep descent into there. We'll, we'll see what we can do. Again, I have very little experience with this plane, so I'm curious to see how it goes. You fly over Old Trafford Stadium. I don't know where that is. something like that and uh let's ask for um i don't know high altitude airways so we're a little over an hour in the air so it is going to take a bit um i might go and start from the runway rather than doing cold and dark to save a little bit of time because there's still going to be some setup for us once we uh even in that situation we're still going to do a little bit of work and of course the ascent adds more time this here i think is a like a flying time in the air estimate. I don't think it accounts for um, the climb and descent. I'm not sure. London City to Paris Le Bourget. Yeah, okay. So, I mean, I think I, I think I like the idea of going to London City. I think that was a great suggestion. Great idea. We'll go to London and then we'll figure out what our next stop will be after that. That's going to be A-OK. -okay. So, yeah, we're going to do the uh, um, IFR uh, high altitude airways. Um, looks like runway 12 is currently active, or at least that's what they're going to give us, which is going to leave us in you know cause us to leave in the right direction um a direct departure i wonder if i want to put in a um a standard instrument departure i think i kind of do let me bring up my navigraph here um and flip this over to display capture 
like so. There we go. So I have a, I do have a Navigraph subs subscription. So for um, Prestwick Airport, there are well, there's actually a few numbers of standard departures, but there are four charts for these these standard instrument departures over here. And we're taking off to the east and south. So one of these two is probably what we're looking for. Yeah, not that direction, not that direction. Oh, not, not that. Yeah, so one of these two departures, the Sudby or Suman, is probably what we're looking at. If we flip back over to here, um, that one, okay, that one's to the south. Hold on, where's my, uh, what's my neck graph? Maybe Suman? Yeah, that feels, that feels a little bit more a little bit more direct for the waypoints that this is already put in. Of course, we could override this. Uh, we could import something from Simbrief. We could do whatever we want for it. But I figure we'll use the built-in systems. That seems okay. London to Barcelona? Maybe. I mean, we have seen Barcelona, but it might be good. So we're going to go with live weather and time for now. Um, if it turns out to be overcast, although it doesn't look like it is over here. But if it was, we wouldn't cry about it here because we're not doing sightseeing. Although... Who knows, we might change our mind partway through the flight and be like, you know what, we want to see the ground better. But I think it's not going to be too shabby. Um, anyone from the Ook out there who can uh, uh, give me some feedback about the live weather, that would be kind of interesting. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull back on the amount of fuel we've got because like, we've got way more than we need here. So let's go and bring it down. If I bring it down to about half, what are we looking at here? Okay, we could probably trim it a little more. Now, again, I think the range that's being indicated here is range in flight. And, of course, uh, we're going to burn a lot more during climb. But this way, we've got we've got about twice as much as we strictly need to get to London. Add in nuts, there maybe 25% to how much we need to handle the climb and various things like that. So the overflow range is more like here, which gives us enough to maybe navigate to an alternate airport if something comes up. Just eyeballing the amount of fuel here. If I was using Simbrief, we'd get actual proper calculations about exactly how much fuel weight we should have, you know, with the extra 10%, with this, with this for padding. Um, and then we would just punch that number in directly. But I think this is looking pretty sexy. Hey, remember to add three seconds. You have to refuel during the pit stop. That's right. Oh, man, I can't wait for Monday so we can play more Motorsport Manager. Um, I've been so into it with the stream. It's been fantastic. Simbrief is a website. Um, Simbrief.com, I think, or just Google Simbrief. Simbrief and Sky Vector are two websites I use heavily for flight planning stuff. Uh, let me switch this back to... Uh, actually, no, I want to still keep the, the desktop thing. So I think we're going to do this. So I'm going to go ahead and hit fly. And while this is loading, we are going to go back into the Navigraph charts. This is not free, although you can generally find these charts for the airports you're looking at if you Google, you know, EGPK over here, um, charts, you'd probably, uh, you'd probably find something. So, uh, I mean, we're going to be departing on runway heading 124. So it's runway 12, but 124 seems to be the runway heading. Um, we're not to exceed 250 knots, uh, unless, you know, until we're at flight level 100, which is 10,000 feet-ish, barometric pressure, yada, yada, yada. Um... And then after that, even on our uh, on the rest of things, we're not to exceed um, 6,000 feet unless we have clearance. We're supposed to be at 4,000 feet by this point, no lower than 5,000 feet over here. And by here, we're supposed to be about bang on 6,000. Theoretically, we should be cleared to a um, higher flight level by then. But this is just, if we haven't been told anything, then that is what we're going to do. Um, anyone out there who is better at reading charts than I am, please let me know if I'm wrong. Uh, at least half of what I'm saying is probably incorrect. The trick is, you don't know which half is wrong. The problem is, neither do I. Um, but yeah, something like that. Looks like there's some uh, some mountainy things over here. I think this is 2,600 feet. Some hilliness. <laughs> what happens in the game if you violate that? Nothing. Um, I mean, if you're on ATC, they will be, you know, and, and you're not at your designated altitude. They will sort of yell at you for not being at it. They'll say, you're over or below or whatever. Um... But, uh, but yeah, there's no, you know, the game doesn't take away your license or anything like that. Okay, so we are inside over here. Um, we can close the ATC window for a sec. We're on the runway. You know, really, we should be taken off right away, but we got that. What do we got? Parking brake on. That is being alerted. Is that the only thing that's bonging at us? But like there was another verbal indicator of things. Um, there we go. It's going to say we need to just adjust those so that we're in the place where we want. All right.
right, so here's the cockpit. Oh, let's take a look quickly outside the plane. So this is a twin turboprop airplane. Turboprops being the uh, sort of middle ground before between a pure propeller plane and a jet plane, because there's a combination of a few different things going on. Yeah, it's using props to push us through the air mostly, but it does have a turbine inside that compresses air and uses it to spin it, and it actually does gain some thrust from the um, the exhaust coming out. Oh, I think it comes out over there, like the exhaust air uh, coming that way, as opposed to the back. That is interesting. Um, flying them is a little bit different. Some of your uh, your controls and things are going to work a wee bit differently than a simple propeller plane. But the nice thing about turboprops is they are unbelievably efficient at these intermediate flights. Because the thing is, jet engines are stupendously good when you're very high, very fast. Suck absolutely when you are low and slow. And like takeoffs and things like that, it's like rough on jets. Um, whereas prop planes are really good in low, thick air. That's really where they excel. And so a turboprop gets to sort of uh, skirt, skirt the line between the two of them, which is kind of nice. Um, this plane here, I don't remember what the ceiling was on the other screen, uh, but apparently I was just reading some specs. There's actually not a lot of info about the plane in the game here. So I was reading some specs out there. A lot of people saying it really does get really fantastic performance at about 25,000 feet. That's kind of the sweet spot for this plane. Um, and I was trying to do some reading about like climb speeds and that sort of thing because it's not necessarily represented in here. Thick air. Absolutely thick. Mm. Mid to high 20s. Yeah. Excellent. Um, ba -da 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 ba 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 Why does the plane have feathers? Um, did you notice the, 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 oops. That's interesting and not entirely desirable. So when you click the middle mouse button, it goes into the free sort of pan view. But then if I mouse wheel, whatever is actually right in the middle of my screen gets the mouse wheel input, which seems poor. I'm going to have to, like, make sure... I zoom in with my mouse set somewhere else. Hmm. I think when we're in mouse look mode like this, maybe not have the scroll. Or maybe if it put a little like, crosshair in the middle of the screen so you could confirm if you're right on a control or not, that would be okay. But without a crosshair, you can't be for sure that you're not on a control. So yeah, Feather, this has to do with the um, the propeller. So this is a... Um, the propellers have a variable pitch, so they can be like sort of more flat into the air or more like this. Um, and these controls here partially partially control that it actually pitches um the propeller by itself what this primary control is in the middle here is for your basically the rpm you're you're dialing in the rpm the rotations per minute that you want for your propeller um and this will feather the prop appropriately or change the prop pitch appropriately to um you know if it's having a hard time clawing through the air and therefore the rpm are dropping it's going to be tilted a little sort of flatter so that's easier for it to cut through the air so you keep a constant rpm which is really good for like engine efficiency and things feathering um means it's set up in a way that it's not going to interact with the air and it's certain ground activities or if you get an engine failure or something like that is when you feather it we don't really have to worry about doing a zat uh no yesterday was not my first time playing uh, microsoft flight simulator uh, I mean, my flight simulators in general, I've been playing for years and years and years and decades when it comes to Microsoft Flight Simulator. But if you're talking about 2020, I've had access to it for a couple of weeks now. Bum, bum, bum. Yeah, yesterday was the first day I streamed it because it was the first day we were allowed to stream it. But I have lots of YouTube videos from before then. Um, so we are going to be doing a lot with the sort of autopilot and the flight management computer and things like that. Now, the FMS here... We do have controls down here for presumably interacting with the FMS. I mean, you can see map buttons, the Direct 2. You can see it's all sort of in-op here, including the uh, keyboard. So on this plane, if you didn't preload a flight plan through the menu we were just at or imported one, I'm actually not sure on this plane how you would make changes to the flight management system since those controls are inoperative. Um... Maybe there's something in, I'm missing, but it's possible that you don't have the ability to manually tweak any of that stuff in there, which would be a bit unfortunate. Uh, but it does have some great displays, um, and they are uh, there's there's you know they're touch enabled. You can access a bunch of different things on these displays, which is really fantastic. Dun, 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 dun. Know about feathering is when the border pixels around your selection are slightly transparent. There you go, banana. Bump bump. Communicate with Twitch chat with that keyboard. That would be pretty good. So my idea here, since we're doing such like a sort of an EU4 inspired flight, um, 
I figure we're going to do the first non-land LAN party. All you guys are at least as many as people as can fit onto this plane, which isn't a lot, actually. It looks like there's basically seating for eight, maybe. You guys have your gaming laptops up here. We've got a Wi-Fi network set up. We are going to play a LAN game of EU4 while we fly to air. Or something is, is, is what we're going with. I think... Anyway, with that discussion, let's do a little bit of configuration of our systems over here and basically be ready to go. Um, there's no auto throttle on this plane. And actually, one of the things we're going to have to watch very carefully is the um, is, is the torque and ITT limitations on this plane. Uh, if I go and hit full throttle over here, it'll actually over torque the plane uh, very, very quickly. So we're going to have to keep an eye on that. We're going to want to basically be at the limit of, of torque right at our red line for takeoff. And then once we enter a climb, we're going to want to pull back to about 90%. And then finally, when we get to cruising, we're going to want to pull it back to about 85%. Um, our propeller for takeoff, we're going to want full RPM. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, bring that up now. Although I think because I have my throttles at idle, I think it's uh, automatically in a, a, a feathered sort of position. Um, last, uh, the last controls over here is the condition, condition lever. From what I can see from my reading on the King Air 350, basically what you're going to do, this more or less, in, in certain ways that you might you might think of it as being an out, I guess to a mixture thing, but it's not. Although there's an alpha and a beta mode for the flying and it's very wonky. Um, it sort of mostly determines like the, uh, the torque when we're at idle. Um, if we're not at sort of the ground idle setting, which is where we are now. Uh, and from reading, it sounds like on these King Airs, you are basically going to spend 99% of your flight time with this lever set in the low idle position. Apparently, even on takeoff. I'm like, really? Sure. Okay. So yeah, we're going to be uh, full prop on takeoff. And then we're going to pull it back to maybe about 1500 RPM for most phases of the flight. Some people say they climb at 1600. Some people they say they go to 1500 right away. Um, the lower settings are more fuel efficient. So uh, we'll do that. Of course, we could fly it at full RPM the whole time. Since we're not paying for, for you know, gas or, um, or engine part replacement. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, park and brake. We don't have our pitot heat on. I actually don't know. Where the pitot? Would it be related to the icing? There we go. Let's let's turn the pitots on. That seems like a good idea. Parking brake is engaged. Okay. Um, so over here, yeah, we're going to set it up. We want to turn on the flight director. And I'm going to say we're going to be in nav mode. So you're going to, for your lateral, for your side-to-side you know, -side sort of aiming, we're going to be looking at the FMS. We can confirm that it's over here. Basically, we're looking to follow this purple line. Although, what I should do, perhaps, where's my nav graph? Um is a heading of 124. What I should probably do is dial in a heading. First, sync it, so it's 126. Dial in a heading of 124, which is what we're supposed to do. And I suppose what I can do is use heading mode for our initial indicator and then switch to nav. But I think it's going to be about the same because the, the nav probably has, it should have our, our SID plugged in, so it should be about the same. Um, other than that, I think what we might do is, uh, I'll dial in an altitude. We know we're not supposed to exceed 7, 000, or 6,000 feet. So we're going to dial in 6,000 feet as a target altitude. Um, our V2, which is our initial climb, I think is at around 110, 111 knots or something like that. Um, with a sort of general climb is probably more... See, why is it going in 1s now? When I was testing this, it was going in 10s. Now, you can hold shift to double the rate. I don't know why sometimes it moves in 10s and sometimes it moves in 1s. Like, both times, I'm not hitting any kind of modifier key. It's not pluses. It's not minuses. Uh, clicking it moves it currently in ones, but before clicking it was moving in tens. And you can see it doesn't matter if I'm hitting it sort of near the top or near the bottom. There's not two quick click points for this. It seems very random when I load the flight sim, whether it decides to move in ones or in tens. The heading bug works the same way. Sometimes it moves in ones, sometimes it moves in tens. And I don't know why. Double click? Nope. And it's not it's not the left side, it's not the right side. It's not the mouse wheel versus the click point. It's very, very inconsistent 
and I haven't figured out what. It's not depending on the acceleration of the clicking. Look, I'll scroll as fast as I can. I'll click as fast as I can. It's not that. Even if I was going slowly, like I, some of you may have not been here yesterday or whatever. We're just we were going through the entire fucking sequence. Excuse me, that we went through yesterday. It has nothing to do with click speed or where we are. I assume there should there. Sh I would think there should be modifier keys. They've clearly got shift in there, which does double whatever it is. But it still doesn't control. It either goes so if it's in ones mode, holding shift makes it go in twos. If it's in tens mode, holding shift makes it goes by twenty. But that's it. It's not. It's not caps lock. It's not control. It's not alt. No idea. Maybe there's some other button I hit that changed it. And it's not just this plane. We were having the same thing in. Um, well, I don't know what it was, but you know, like the Cessna, mostly for the uh, the the heading bug. Very weird. Anyway, we've got our altitude plugged in here. Hopefully, ideally, we'd get cleared for a high altitude before we hit six thousand feet. We may or may not. We'll see. Um, and I'm gonna tell. We're gonna be in flight change mode. Oh, did it reset my speed? Air back, scrolling up to 160 knots again, at, at one at a time. Okay. Um, so... How come I don't have a purple line anymore? We have the f uh, flight director on. Oh, well, it's going to be fine. We'll go there. And we're, we're all set up anyway for what our initial climate is going to look like. Um, now, the interesting thing here is based on my reading, it sounds like with the King Air 350, you actually typically take off flaps up. No flaps. Even here, actually, you can see it's like flap up, approach, down. So the flaps are all the way up. You can check. Yep. All the way up. Apparently, that's just the way it goes. I think we're ready to go. Um, now, there is... I haven't I haven't programmed in the uh, the hotkey for it. There is a go-around button. Now, I don't know if that's also a toga button that will auto-set it somewhere. But again, it doesn't have auto-throttle. So, mostly what we're going to be doing is we're going to be keeping a very close eye on our torque settings over here. Because it's very easy for us to go over with that. So we're in low idle, which is apparently correct. We're in full RPM, which is correct for takeoff. Um, we're just going to release the parking brake, and we're going to smoothly throttle up. And we are going to be rotating at around 100 knots thereabouts. I haven't done the calculations for our actual current weight, but it's going to be in the ballpark. What could possibly go wrong? So, yeah, control shift escape is what I use all the time for the task manager. Yeah, it totally saves a click. And every time someone finds out about it for the first time, they're like, oh my god, where's this been all my life? But yeah, I use that all the time. Control shift escape just brings up the task manager directly. Okay, so release the parking brake. Done. And let's bring it up. Go, I'm just bringing up the uh, throttle lever to about 50%, waiting for some things to, uh, to throttle up here. You can see the props have now defeathered. And they're sitting at about 1,600 RPM. I know the numbers are really tiny over here. Sitting about 1,600 RPM currently. Okay, let's bring the throttles all the way up over here. That person changed my life. There you go! There's there's always someone. Because it's not like Windows, like, advertises this. 99% of the time, people are hitting Control-Alt-Delete. Because it doesn't reboot your computer anymore, right? Is Is to... Then click on the task manager button. It's like, <laughs> hold my keyboard. Oh, there's my flight directory indicator again. Oh shit, I was I was busy looking at at chat and then thinking what I was saying. So we uh, we missed our rotate point. We're going a little faster than we needed to, but that's okay. Pulling up to about ten degrees. Vertical rate. Excellent. And actually, yeah, I should have pitched up more because our initial climb out. Was gonna was gonna be more like the 111 knots or something. Oh shit! What did I say about throttling too much? I wasn't watching. We got like the fire warning because my temps were all being exceeded. All right. Now we're gonna try to maintain that 160. 
with the heading, I think I can probably at this point just go ahead and engage the autopilot. Oh, I don't have my auto damp or my yaw damper on. I missed a step. There we go. Yeah, overheating the engines a tiny little bit. So I've got a prop pitch down as well. Let's, um, if I go down and then to the right and then to the right some more. There we go. So I want to bring my prop RPM down to about 1500. I'll do something like that. And then the torque's currently at 88. I can give us a little bit more. Maybe at about 90% torque for the climb. Bring it back a scooch. And we're going to have to watch it as, as many, um parts of our flights change, this torque is going to change a little bit for us. So we're going to have to keep another eye on things. Um, let's take a look outside the plane. That's the wrong button. This one over here. There we go. Ah, oh, flying over the Scottish countryside. So Prestwick and my lovely little town of air right over here that I've spent so much time in. One of my favorite places in the world. Quill just has nine parachutes for himself just in case. That's right, baby. Now, in the back, you are now free. Well, technically, we should probably wait until 10,000 feet. But whatever. You are free to open up your laptops and begin your non-land LAN tournament of European Universalis 4. Have fun back there. And may the best nation win. So we're going to continue to climb out at about 160 knots. We're climbing well. We've got a target of uh, 6,000 feet. Um... We, oh, we've been told to climb to 13,000. I still have the autopilot on the radio, which actually, hold on. I'm going to have him not do that anymore, so I'm going to be required to interact. But I'm just going to go ahead and raise this target, because apparently uh, climbing 13,000 feet, apparently we were okayed for that, and I just missed it because I wasn't actually involved in the radio communication. Yeah, I guess so. All right. Um, and somewhere... Oh, come on. Now, again, because it's sort of sensitive to inputs, even while I'm panning around, it will keep interpreting a touchscreen input on this screen while I pan around. So I'll have to, like, reset the uh, the flight indication over there. Um, and because the FMS buttons down below are all in-op, like, I can't necessarily cycle through some of the various um, uh, modes over here, say, to show us the, the legs... Um, and whatnot, but we can at least, you know, confirm that we're going over our waypoints for our flight path correctly. Um, as we hit these things, we check on some of the altitude, so we're crossing 6,000 feet, but again, we were cleared to 13,000, so presumably everything is okay. You bought this game because you like airplanes, curious to see if it would work with my farming sim wheel, like Elite Dangerous did. Okay, that's really funny. Play flight sim in the plane. I've done that. It doesn't work so well for me because, you know, maybe if I brought, like, a little Xbox controller, so I'd at least have a stick, but just trying to use, like, keyboard and trackpad to fly a plane, mm, not so great. Not so great. So we're going to keep scanning here. You can see, oh, you see our torque's gone up some more. Look at this. We're up to 93%. And it's going to keep sort of climbing up there. I think as the air gets maybe a little thinner, it, it like, the torque goes, I, I don't know. But we got to keep an eye on these numbers because they will get away from you, I noticed. I think your co-pilot just pulled out his laptop to play Microsoft Flight Simulator 20, won't we? Nice. You bring enough whiskey, I mean fuel. Um, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe we'll finish it that way. Um, now, one of the things with starting on the runway is you don't start off and you actually don't even have the ability because when, once you're cleared for takeoff, the uh, ATC is sort of locked there, um, to check the ATIS. So I actually have no idea what the... Um, what the air pressure setting should be. And we're cleared for an altitude, which means we should be at the correct um, uh, air pressure while we're in here. At some point, we'll hopefully get cleared for a flight level, at which point we should be on the standard altitude of 29 or 9 or 2. Where's the destination? So today, we are going to London City Airport. But our ultimate destination is air. Not air, we, where we started from, but air. So, air Scotland to air Niger. Ah, well, the area formerly known as air. Although there's still the air mountains. It's air with, um, with an umlaut over the eye. So, 
A I double dot R. And so we'll have to do a flyover. Okay, we're over 10,000 feet at this point. Um, so there's normally a bunch of things we do here. First of all, I never actually did check the lights, but I think the lights would have all been... Are they seriously all off? Hang on, let me retoggle here. Oh, no, they were all on. Okay. So um, taxi lights can be off. At this point, we're so high up, we don't need the landing lights anymore. And in fact, I think above 10,000 feet, technically you don't really need any lights. Or we're going to leave them on. There are four lights! Um, yeah, we've got some extra controls for this over here. Prop sync in up. There's a few things that aren't plugged in on this plane. That's okay. I do I do really like the yoke. Oh, that's not me either. Let me shrink this down a wee bit. I want to keep it up because we actually do refer to this quite often here when we get instructions. Um, are you on a live server with other early access folks flying around? So, yeah, I am. I do have the, uh, let me access it from here. I actually don't know. Uh, probably somewhere. But yes, uh, it is that not only live people, but actual live flights. In theory, what's interesting that it's, it's pitching down a little to maintain the speed. What are we climbing at? Seven, eight, oh, it's varying some. Uh, autopilot, what are you doing, buddy? Did we just hit, like, wicked wind pockets? Oh! We're at 13,000 feet! No. I'm like, why Why is everything going all weird? Alright, we're good. So, we're gonna go here. And bring this up. Again, it would be nice if there was an, uh, an option that we knew how to control that could switch us from hundreds to thousands over here. Uh, what was it? Two Okay, well, let's let's get that started anyway. I'll, I'll finish this in a second. Um, and here again, it goes to our current speed and tries to hold it. And I'm going to bring down our target speed again to 160 knots, which should accelerate our climb a fair bit. There you go. And 25,000. So flight level 250 is in there. We're we pitching up like 20 degrees? That's a little ambitious, Mr. Autopilot. How's our torque? Yeah, see? Does this keep getting away from us? We don't do anything. We'll suddenly find ourselves in an over-torque situation. And our RPM, still good over there. I guess I could, um, let's give us a little bit more. A little more prop. There we go. About 1,600. It'll be a little bit more aggro with that. Okay, so we're back at about 160 knots, climbing aggressively, nearly 2,000 feet per minute. That's a good climb rate. I like that a lot. Um, did we not get told about traffic? I'm hoping this plane is way under us. Damn, that's pretty. Or well above us. Yeah, I don't know. Must It must be well below us. Turn off AC for fuel efficiency. <laughs> um, we do have uh, some extra controls to mess with some things. Now, this is mostly lighting, generators. Where is the um, where's the air stuff? Different different air from the ones we were talking about before. Environmental. Uh, are we? Is it off? Oh, is this in op? Ah, we don't get to fiddle with these. They don't have to do anything. It's not like, you know, passenger temperature matters. But it would be fun if it still let you just twist the dials. Ooh. No, no, we're, we're cleared to twenty uh, to uh, 25,000 feet. Our first clearance was 13,000, we, and we got there a, a minute or two ago. What do you mean the altimeter should be 3001? Well, first of all, uh, right now we're going to a flight level, so we should be on standard altimeter, which is what we are. There we go. We're making a turn to the next nav point. Now, what I should do, if I had the sim brief, for each one of these nav points I was hitting, I would have a fuel level, a predicted or expected fuel level, and then I would go and cross-check that with, um, with my fuel amounts 
to make sure we could we could toggle through some extra modes over here to make sure that we aren't burning way more fuel than expected which could be the sign of a fuel link or a leak or something like that <laughs> is the uh, transition altitude uh the transition altitude in most of europe is about 5000 isn't it although it still mostly matters i think what the atc gives us because in in the uh in north america it's 10000 feet the torque back up to 95 god damn this thing continues to sneak up. All right, there you go. Back around 90. Oh, slightly under. Somewhere around there anyway. And yeah, we'll probably try to bring it down to about 85 once we do go into level flight. The other thing I've noticed, notice the uh, estimated time on route. Every time we cross a waypoint, it goes really wacky and it goes to hours here. And then at some point it'll fix itself and go back to like, oh yeah, you got like, you know, 28 minutes left or something. Oh, 18,000 in A. Yes, of course. Yes, you're right. 10,000 is where you do certain things. But yes, you're right. My bad. Mm -hmm. Sounds like spamming all the real life flights to 10,000 to give you clear skies. Maybe that is what it's going, it's doing, which is a little bit weird. Like, should it really be giving directions to the real-life flights? I mean, in a sense, yeah, because you, you kind of want radio chatter, don't you? This isn't it more interesting that way? Why are people... Why are so many people think... You know this is not me, right? These are... I'm not FedEx or Easy or Ryanair. People keep thinking, no, you need to be at 10,000. We climb and maintain. Quill, Quill Leet should be a hint. Flight level 250. I know. And then chat gets mad when I don't listen to them. And it's like, well, you realize that, like, at least half the time I can't listen to you either, right? This relation, this abusive relationship goes back both ways. Neither one of us can listen to each other because we're, we're both wrong half the time. Great and healthy. I have used VATSIM on my own. I'm unlikely to use VATSIM for streaming because I won't really be able to listen to the VATSIM while also having a conversation with you guys. At least with this ATC, we've got the text as a, as a, uh, as a thing. <laughs> you must always listen to chat, especially when half the chat contradicts the other half. Yeah. Well, if we weren't FedEx, why did we load all those letters and parcels into the plane? Oh, we're just stealing them. We're hoping that someone sent each other candy or something. It'll be nice. Okay, we're approaching our cruising altitude of 25,000, which I assume will be our, our probably our final um, altitude change. The torque is still just under 90, which seems fine. Um, oh, the uh, prop RPM has continued to climb and continues to climb, essentially as a result of some of the thinner air. So I'm going to go ahead... And not do anything? Quill one three three seven contact Manchester Center on one one eight decimal seven seven five. One one eight decimal seven seven five quill one three three seven. And our torque keeps going up. Okay, there we go. That's... Oh, shit. Okay, hold on. I have no idea what was happening there. Uh, I, I should probably actually tune into Manchester Center. Manchester Center, Quill 1337, flight level 250. Yeah, I have the prop lever all the way down well not actually into the feather position i have it as low as it will go but it's not actually changing the prop rpm three holy crap all right again it would be nice if i could toggle this to go to thousands Uh, 
um, flight level change. And then what we do is we bring down our speed. Our target speed, so we'll pitch up together. Okay, I should probably done this more gradually because this autopilot is doing it like so aggressively and poor passengers in the back. Well, really what I should do is I should kind of be manually probably like starting the climb and then putting it into this rate. Oh, ho, ho, these maneuvers. Yeah, uh, I'll just dial this back slowly next time. But I still don't know why, because we weren't having this issue before, and I wasn't having this issue in the test flight. Like, I can't bring back the prop rate anymore. What happens if I bring it all the way up? Oops. What will happen is I'll, I'll accidentally also hit the, uh, the, the throttle. Let me center the throttle to about 50% here. The full prop, 17, 000, uh, 1,700. I bring it down, it climbs, because the torque is going up again. Is it on, like, auto prop mode or something? Yeah, I don't know why um, why the RPM isn't sort of doing what I expect. I suspect it's probably because of something I'm doing or not doing. Is we're still climbing at 1,500 feet per minute, that speed. I'm going to still dial it down to about 170. I want to request a lower flight level. Am I, go I don't think I'm going over my limits. As long as it's going to get me to descend quickly enough once we get where we're going. That's what I'm a little concerned about is it's going to be, okay, you have you have two minutes to descend 35,000 feet to land. I'm a turboprop. I'm a turboprop. Not a jet, but I'm a turboprop. I am curious. Um, if we take a look. Um, Beach King Air ceiling. Service ceiling, 35,000 feet on a Beach King Air 350, which is what we're flying. Max speed, 320 knots. No, we're we're definitely uh we're definitely within our limits here. We just heard a bong. Are we? Oh! Cabin pressure is also our torque is getting torqued. Okay. My, I'm going to ask my uh, co-pilot for some help, Mr. Button, Mr. Pause Button. So we are currently paused. Some of the numbers on the screen might still change because it does that for some reason. Um, okay, that bonging for the air pressure stop. But the thing is... Have an altitude... I don't think I actually have any real control over the uh, the pressure systems. Yeah, we could request a decrease, or part of the problem might be. Let me uh, let me unpause and. Yeah. Okay. So that. Oh shit. So it wasn't just a visual thing. We were actually disconnect the autopilot. We were actually losing airspeed while paused. Yeah, so that's a bug. Listen, shut up. I'm declaring a state of pause-based emergency. Okay. Engage autopilot. Release. Mr. Button, my co-pilot... Maybe he had a few too many uh, whiskeys before he took off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Climbing 9,000 feet per minute. Go, autopilot. This is exactly the sort of behavior I, that I'm looking forward to for... Man, what the shit, man? Anyway, all that started because I paused because we got an air pressure warning, which I'm thinking 
may be because the air pressure can only adjust so quickly. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to climb as quickly. So we'll keep a higher horizontal speed. We'll give it a minute to sort of stabilize again here. And then we'll, uh, we'll adjust. Yeah, we'll pause. And while it's paused, somehow we're going to lose all of our horizontal speed. Like, what? And the, uh, yeah, the, um, the prop is completely 100% ignoring my inputs here. It's nice and stable. And we can see visually, like, it moves, right? If you look at the bottom, you can see the prop go up, prop go down. If it wasn't for the fact that I was touching the, uh, the condition, we we're getting absolutely no change in the RPM. So, do we have some sort of auto prop mode enabled? First, let me check that I don't have a stupid assist on. Well, we have some. Okay, the auto takeoff rudder, which I could probably tear off, actually. Um, assisted checklist. This just enables a good button that's useful. So, no, that's fine. Auto mixture is on. I'm wondering... I hate having to recalibrate the gyro, but I'm wondering if the auto mixture is affecting the prop on this plane, because this plane doesn't actually have a mixture, but if maybe there's some weird intersection between these two systems. No. No, there's not. Failures and damage is set to full. And the prop was definitely responding to my inputs earlier. But now I don't know. Alright. So we're now climbing. Still over a thousand feet per minute, which is a pretty good climb rate given how high we are. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and dial in... Look! It's moving by tens! Why? Why is it moving by tens now? Whether I click or mouse wheel... But the annoying thing is the heading bug is probably doing the same too. Um, so, right now, one, two, four. One, three, four. What if I want to dial in a one, two, six? Now I can't do it anymore. Is it because I hit escape and went into a menu? Is it because I paused and unpaused? Maybe if you almost crash again, it will fix it. Yeah, like, like I'm fully willing to accept that it might be something I'm doing or not doing. But whatever it is, it really isn't clear. And you can see our estimated time to arrival is still completely out of whack. We are not five hours away. I mean, the, the minutes are burning away here. I mean, or is this supposed to be five minutes and three seconds? Maybe this is minutes and seconds until the next waypoint. Yes, it is, actually. That's the time to the next waypoint, not the time to our final destination. Okay, that's why it's a little confusing. I thought this was until um, until our final destination, not the next waypoint. All right, that mu that's cleared up. That's good. This still have no idea. So we're in flight level change. Two hundred knots is programmed in. Thirty five thousand feet, which is correct for our target. We're climbing still at over a thousand feet per minute. We don't have an air pressure differential warning, so that's nice. We got that going for us. Push. There's this is not a um, this is not a uh, this is not a push knob. I can push to select what our current speed is, but there's nothing else. Like, some of them, um, actually, I don't know if this plane has a, uh, a dual knob knob. Because some of them, the, uh, the knobs on some planes, will have a lower, bigger ring, and then a, uh, smaller ring, like, further up. And depending on where you grip it, down below or above, it's, it's actually two knobs. They're just stacked on top of each other, and you can use that, um, you know, usually for tuning the radios or for, um... Actually, mostly I'm thinking of tuning the radios, where you can, you know, access different different parts of it, you know, 
the decimals versus the whole numbers or whatever. But it's not one of those. Yeah, the G1000 dual concentric. Cabin altitude. Use oxygen mask. Why can that plane not keep pressure? I'm gonna, uh, sorry, I'm going to increase the speed so that we climb slower. Cabin climb. Yeah, I think it's limited on how quickly it can increase our air pressure. Hopefully it doesn't have, like, a blackout mechanism. Did you remember to close the door? In X-Plane, you would actually start to black out. I don't know if that's a thing. The cabin, cl the cabin climb has gone to zero here, which is interesting. We still have the warning that we're still out of whack with the air pressure in the cabin. Yeah, let's check the windows. Can't open them. And I don't have any direct ability to interact with the cabin pressure options, as far as I know. Because normally you would dial in um you would dial in sort of a target altitude while well, for your landing and things. Oh, wait, hold on. Hey! Hang on a second. I was looking at the wrong area. Let's uh increase the rate. Cabin altitude. Um Oh, I can't even get to the target speed? Okay. Is dialed in for thirty-five thousand. The inner ring here. I can't zoom in any more than this. Uh, alt. Down. There you go. Thirty-five thousand is what it looks like to me. I don't know why that jump. Oh, it jumps that way. Maximum rate. Yeah, don't bother. We're all dead back here. Yeah, you're just getting a little lightheaded. And now my props are over 2,000. I can't bring back my prop meter any more than this. Guys, there's something wrong with this plane. Again, I'm willing to accept that I'm effing up a bunch of stuff. I mean, unless my torque's supposed to be down in the 50%, but we're having trouble climbing as is. But that doesn't seem likely. And now we're well outside of our appropriate temperature range. I think the prop system is busted. Because all the specs I saw, like, unless there's another prop control button that I'm not seeing, were, you know, you climb at about 90% torque, you cruise at about 85%, your prop you leave at about 1,500. Have we missed some other bouton? I mean, this is, this is nothing. That's in-off. Let me uh, switch things to high idle with the condition levers, but... No, that, that has nothing to do. In fact, that just increased the uh, the prop situation worse than before. Yeah, we'll, we'll change altitudes, because at least it was working there. Although we're at 35,000 feet now. <laughs> I mean, we got there. We're not going too high for this plane. This plane has a service ceiling of 35,000 feet. All right. We'll descend and maintain. No problem. Set a new altitude target. Um, now, with the flight level change here... Quill 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. So now it's going to pitch down. Because I've killed the engine, it's going to pitch down to try to maintain about 200 knots, although I'm no longer able to dial in 200 knots. Because why would I? Why would I be able to turn this dial by ones now? This is if I'm, I'm dialing in a uh, vertical speed. But I like the idea of targeting an actual speed. Actually, what I should probably do for the descent, because we can go, we can cruise quite a lot faster than this. I'm going to dial in a targeted speed of 250. Now, I don't want to drop too fast, so I'm going to put us back up to some amount of throttle. At least we're, we just, just now, the um, altitude warning went away. This autopilot as well has such a hard time catching. Admittedly, I'm making some pretty dramatic changes with some of these requests, but like it has no damping. The prop is over rotating. The torque is going nuts as well. My biggest problem is still though, like the knobs. If I pause and unpause, is it going to change what this rotates at again? Nope. The two prop auto and manual flick switches under your landing lights. Do you mean the, the, the icing ones? Auto feather. It's, this is in op as well. Um. These don't do anything. An operative. And the problem is the RPM, we were running into the issue that we weren't able to control our RPM um, well before we got to the 30,000s. We were still on our very earliest climb. Um, yeah, that's a that's an excellent point. All right, you know what? We'll just go to virtual speed mode. Send me that way. Maybe the prop sync button. That's a great idea. Oh, it's in op as well. And the prop sync wouldn't uh, wouldn't be the solution here. Prop sync um, has to do with the actual twin propellers, whether or not they're sort of synchronized on the RPMs, uh, which helps to deal with a certain amount of like whoop, whoop, whoop kind of noise, as I think the big thing with prop sync. I think you normally want the prop sync off for takeoff and landing um, so that the propellers really aren't being like impeded in any sorts of way from just trying to operate as efficiently as possible. Then I think you would turn it on generally. Uh, I think shortly after takeoff, like still within the climb, I think you would enable it. Mm -hmm. Need to turn the plane off and on again? That sounds pretty correct, actually. There's a very good chance of that. No, the knobs don't click in. It's a good... I mean, that's a good idea, but it, it, it does not. There are some controls on some planes that do have a knob that you push in or you push out to select um, different rotating modes. So some have twin knobs, and some do have a push in, push out, but that's not that kind of knob. And the only push I can do is I can synchronize the alt to the current thing, or the speed to current speed, or the heading to the current heading. That's it. <laughs> or, you know, you could re re repeat the same thing over and over. Turn off the autopilot. Well, I did turn it off a second ago, actually. Right. Unless it's related to the yaw damper or something, but I don't think so. So, let's, uh, we'll turn off the autopilot. There we go. Autopilot is off. Check the prop. Prop up. Ooh, prop down. Although, you know, it was already there. It was already down at 15, even with the autopilot. Okay, autopilot is on. Give it a second to stabilize.
Just give it a second to stabilize. And see now, now there's some prop response. But maybe it was because maybe we're so we're way too high up to be practical. It's entirely possible. You know, it's got a service ceiling of 35,000, and maybe the flight simulator is the ATC is telling us to go there, but that's not really where we should go. We did talk about how the beginning of the flight, that the mid 20,000s, is kind of the sweet spot for this plane, but I didn't expect it to get bonkers outside of that sweet spot. So we're coming up to 25,000 now, so it's going to want to level out, which means we will start to lose some speed as it does so. So we're going to have to throttle up in response. We're just going to. Keep an eye on things over here. There you go. I can watch these numbers. Yeah, I know it's max altitude, not optimal, but it was flying like we were past its um, its maximum. It feels like once we cross about 31,000, it feels like the plane really does not work properly, which to me is very weird here. Feels like everyone's just repeating the same things over and over. Different things, contradictory things to each other, but still repeating the same things. We haven't been told that we should be at ten thousand feet for a while, so that part is good. All right, we're leveling it off. I may have I may have throttled up a little too fast here. I assumed we were going to be bleeding off speed a little sooner than this. There we go. Now we're bleeding off speed because we're leveling off. We're going to take an outside view in a second, but you can see how different this is from our flight seeing or sightseeing flights, right? We're not really spending any time looking outside because we're we're actually trying to keep the plane vaguely where it should be. Vaguely where it should be. Bottle up a little. I do really like having planes with um with auto throttle. Needs a lot less babysitting. All right, take a look outside for a sec. So, um, oh, it's gorgeous. I have to say, I do like these big fluffy clouds. They're beautiful, but not really much to see outside anyway. Yes, I saw that message about massage your knob instead of pushing and pulling. So we're just holding altitude and fly, following the flight management system. That's good. Works about where I want it. I mean, maybe the prop behavior is exactly how it's supposed to work. I've got this thing pulled down to like the lowest it can be. And based on descriptions I was reading online, it says people were saying like, yeah, you just sit it around when you're at cruise, you set it to about 1500 RPM. I can't. Now we're sitting at nearly 1800 RPM. 1800 rpm over here and that's with the lever set to as low as it will go i'm curious if i were to bring the prop up now okay it won't go up and i think it's because of the target now i'm realizing it's not that it doesn't respond it's that i think at the highest range of the lever it's targeting something like 1650 and we're well above that and at the lower one it's targeting around 1500 or actually more like 1450 um and it just can't get there the prop is just going too fast regardless but our temps are good, our torques are okay, and maybe that's just the way it's supposed to be. Now the cabin's overpressurized. Yeah, that's probably true. Everyone's ears popping. Go back and, uh... I don't know if this is, uh, rep simulated or represented by anything. Do you just match the alt... Like, I don't even know, like, if you're just supposed to match your, uh, your outside altitude with this? No clue. I don't know if that's the goal with that. Um, I'm more used to messing with altitude controls on uh, something like an airliner, like the Boeing, where on the uh, on the top part you would set your cruising altitude. You'd also set the uh, the altitude of um, of the airport you're landing at. You would set it there, the two knobs just above. You would set those two. So I assume this might be more. You dial in your your cruising altitude. Would you would you update it? I think I don't think you update it constantly to match your altitude. You just I think you set it to your cruising altitude when you know what that's going to be. 
I don't think it's like, oh, we climbed another thousand feet, dial. Oh, we climbed another feet, thousand feet, dial. I think you sort of set a target and then it tries to sort of match. I don't know. Uh, there are random plane failures, but they're turned off. I So I think the prop pitch, I think I've realized it is working the way it's supposed to be working. Um, just that none of what I was reading in part of my prep work to fly this plane talked about, yeah, but when you get at your cruising altitude, your prop RPM is just going to be higher than, than you know you imagined for whatever reason. Or it's not working right. I don't know. Having not actually compared it to, you know, flying in an actual one of these King Air 350Is, I have no way to determine that. The Alpha Yoke's fantastic. Stupendous. Great hardware. Love it. The smoking light on. That's actually a great question. I think I just checked. Um, at passenger lights. Or is it... Yeah, do we actually have seatbelt and uh, cigarette? I don't know. I mean, it says no smoking. I'm wondering if earlier iterations of the uh, plane may have even had a, um, a button here to toggle the no smoking lights on and off, and they just don't have it anymore, so it's just replaced with this because it's always, you know, it's always implied, no, you can't smoke on a goddamn airplane. Stop trying. Hmm. How's everyone doing back there? Everyone dead? No, they're fine. They played a, a couple of decades already. Uh, two people in Germany already had coalitions uh, started against them because that's the way life works in the HRE. We're pretty close to our speed maximum, but I'm going to call that mostly okay. Now, again, it would be really nice if I can scroll around on this. Um, I can zoom out. Yeah. Yeah. I think, like, what I would like to do is toggle through some of my things down here for the flight plan so that I could see, hey, how far do we have left to go? I'm really not getting a lot of that info here. It's a shame. Easiest thing to do is probably just pop this open and see where we're at. Now, I've never landed with this plane, which means there's at least a 90% chance that um, we crash on landing. My first, it's going to be my first time landing with this airframe. Because um, the only time I'd flown it before was our little, like, 10 minute boop around um, uh, South Africa there, Cape Hope. And um, we didn't land. We just, you know, we just buzzed around and then we loaded up a new, a new site. So we're going to see how that goes. Again, expect disasters. Oh, uh, Split It does this, and then presumably, you know, yeah, you can control each screen individually. And then, you know, maybe open different modes and stuff over here, but it's not giving me what uh, what we need. It's really cool. I like how it animates it, too. Like, it's very slick. <laughs> yeah, before, before everyone boarded the plane, I should have let people know ahead of time. By the way, I've never landed this plane, uh, so things may go terribly. Hard mode is on for the plane braking, yes. All the, um, if we overspeed, if we overstress the engine, um, if we if we hit the ground too hard, any of those things, we will black screen and be told that, uh, you know, GG, you suck, try again later. A lot of people keep asking about autopilot issues. Um, other than the fact that on this plane, the uh, the autopilot, like, is is tuned to be maybe too aggressive, to uh, to deal with the um, uh, the flight level change instructions and the speed change instructions and things like that, uh, so you really have to dial in quite gently. But that actually might represent just the op the air autopilot on this. But I don't know if there was some uh, autopilot stuff like brought up on forums or something because people were asking about that yesterday, and I've seen zero actual problems with the autopilot. Every mode uh, seems to have worked. V I haven't tried VNAV on this plane because. Um, uh, because I don't have access to the FMS on this plane, I don't know what was configured for, you know, the climbing speed and the cruising things or anything like that. Uh, like, I don't know if it would have just been pulling that out of the, uh, the FMS and then whatever. So I didn't do that. But when we try the actual airliner vibe, when we try a Boeing or an Airbus or something like that, uh, we'll certainly try VNAV and, uh, and, and see what goes on over there. 
Uh, what was that? George plays? Hey, George, thank you very much. Just watch your new... Oh, SFO, yeah. So the San Francisco flight was awesome. Now my heart is aching to go back there. Well, you know, if you go to San Francisco, you might find you might find someone's heart that they left there. So, you know, it can work out. Just wear some flowers in your hair. Uh, well, someday when the plague thing is over, thanks for keeping me entertained. Meanwhile, can't wait for tomorrow's EU4 episode. If there's one recorded for tomorrow, if I'm really busy with the flights and stuff, I'll take a look. We'll see. Uh, but yeah, I, I really want to go back to San Francisco as well. I love the city. It's just really wonderful. How's it looking outside? Pretty much just fluffy clouds everywhere. Okay. <laughs> this is the distance to the next waypoint. I was having the same thing with the time being like, what? That's weird. We're not five hours away. This is 28 miles or five minutes away to the next waypoint, which actually we got close enough to the waypoint. It just changed the next one over here. So the distance went up. The time went up. The clouds are gorgeous. Like, that is actually really, really nice. These are the best looking clouds, certainly out of the box of any flight sim ever. And even when I compare to some of the um, weather add-ons and stuff. Oh, I'm flying over you right now, Benj? Awesome. Um, uh, what was I saying? Even, oh, even some of the third party stuff, like, um, like Rex or stuff like that that I've used before. Uh, I think this might be nicer. It certainly moves very efficiently. Mm-hmm. <laughs> No, I think we figured out the prop stuff. Uh, if I moved it into the, um, like, I can, we definitely don't want to feather the prop. That That's not what we're looking to do. But I think it's just a, a factor of the altitude and our speed that the prop is just, it's just spinning faster than we sort of dialed in. But that might just be the way that it works. I don't know. I mean, we're, we're not redlining the, the prop RPM, so that's okay. The torque is basically bang on for where we want for cruise. We're at the lower end of the ITT here. Um... Speed is good. We're bang on where we need to be elevation-wise. Um, as we approach London City, we should get an update with the the correct air pressure, the ground air pressure, where we're going. So right now, we want to be on standard altitude. Um, where do I dial in the barometric pressure on this plane? He just realized he was missing out on something quite important. I mean, there's the barrel over here. Okay, hold on. Does that actually adjust everything? No. See, it's adjusting the barrel. This is because this is a redundant thing, right? So this is our secondary uh, speed and altimeter. So I can adjust the barometric pressure here, but it's not changing it over here. Oh, right here. In up. Okay. Yeah, this cockpit might be a little less complete than uh, I had hoped. I say all the uh, all the single prop planes uh, that I I've flown, a hundred percent, great shape. Huh. Yeah, I am aware that it's a steep approach into London City. Ah. Uh, so first time landing this plane, first time landing in London City. Huh. Uh, I mean, there is, there, there, these are all, they're both touchscreens, but. I don't even know how to hide this now that it's up. I know you can go to audio and then click audio again to get rid of it. I don't even know what brought that up. Clicking somewhere over there, but. 
Oh, oh, this area here is the click point. I see. I ju we just had an outside view like two minutes ago. It's very pretty. I, the only reason I get sort of cranky sounding with that because I want to always answer everything in chat. But I'm often in a situation where I can't because otherwise we're doing the same thing over and over. Flat palm the whole MFD. Yeah, maybe. So over here, I mean, okay, I can click and drag. We got that. Nothing to click over there. I mean, we're not doing transponder, the audios. Oh, I guess we're switching comms to standby. Okay, that's good. The split view is not the answer to anything over here. And here's exactly the same situation as before. I don't think we can adjust the pressure. I think it's supposed to be this knob over here, except it don't work. This entire console down here, none of this is, is functional. That is very disappointing. We're going to switch planes for the next leg of this journey. That's what we're going to do. Yeah, there's a back. We can use this one. That, that's good news. We'll just we'll just use this. Whenever we get told the pressure, we'll use this, and we'll just have to keep an eye on this altitude. And use this one for our landing. Okay, London City Airport. I need to bring up the charts for this. Um, where's my navigraph? And what is? Can I just type in London City. There you go. London City. Charts. Thank you. You guys can't see it, I just realized. Do something like this. Now, we don't know what um, what landing. I mean, I guess we're not worried about the standard, um, the standard approach, because we're doing one of these already. Although, it would have been noted in our flight plan on the other screen, and I could have written that down and kept track of it. But this is basically um, plugged in. So most of the question is, at some point, we're going to be told one of two runways. Well, it's the same runway. Same runway, just different ends. So I don't know if we're going to be landing on 9 or 27. Um, I don't know which one is active right now. Uh, we'll be told that as we approach. Um, but the... Uh... Yeah, we're probably going to want to use the glide scope and everything. That'll help a lot, actually. Is it the same locator? But one's probably inverted, yeah. 111.15. One, one, one the one's the reverse course. Um, okay, next question. How? How do I dial in the nav radios in this point? Man, I mean, bombs, nav radio. Okay, this is apparently the same as hitting this knob. That's great. Use the force. All right, we've got too many knobs. Over. Not that these work, but they also, they just do seem to be calm related. Here's what we're going to do. Panel scan. Definitely not up here. I'm thinking you actually have to interact with the FMS to tune these radios. And the FMS controls are in up. Thanks for the bits. Uh, what is that? Suspicious links. Oh, the EVE tutorials. Nice. Yeah, I really still want to play more Eve. Like, arrival info. Guys, I think this plane is no good. Because there's critical parts of the plane that I think we are lacking access to because the FMS, like, control panel doesn't do anything. Uh, 
Um, how can I change? Okay. I can change the CDI source. Let's go over to the co-pilot's side. Maybe? Does it? Oh, does that actually pan over to there? Okay. Let's go here. Let me change. Is this going to do both? This might confuse the uh, autopilot here. Shit. Yes, it does. All right. Um, just fly this heading. There we go. So, VOR1. Great. Now, how do I plug that in? Again, I have the uh, the standby. I can alter change between my standby and active comms. I can choose which one I'm listening to, which is what this is. Can I even tune the comm radio myself? I don't think I can, because the tuning knob... The shit, man. The tuning knob is right over here, but it's in-op. In the ATC menu. What? No. No, okay. Turning on a radio listen to, this just means if I tune in to one of these radios, then um, I will hear the Morse code of it. That's, uh, well, the speaker for it, for sure. Do anything. Because um, that would be it. You'd, you'd hear the, because every one of these nav radios um, uh, put out a Morse code indicator so you can listen to it and confirm that you're listening to the right channel, which is really great. So yeah, for tuning the comm, usually you just go through the ATC menu. You don't you don't normally worry about dialing it manually. I mean, you can. If you want to be realistic, right, you would, instead of going, say, nearest airport list and using this to tune into an airport, what you would do is you would, you would turn the knob to the correct frequency that you're supposed to be listening to. But there's no, there's no ability to set your, um, your, your other radio, your nav radios to this. Sometimes the FMS will do it for you. Nicely set up for that, but we don't actually have access to it. Saw a numpad pop up on the side of the screen at some point. Don't know how. Um, oh, hello. Hold on. How do we get there? That was with the split screen on. Flight plan... Nav one frequency. Okay, we got a thing. Holy shit. So. Okay, first of all, wait, 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 wait. Um. Cancel. Go back to FMS. Yeah, we have we have things happening now. Go back to nav mode. Did it take? Yes. Okay. Holding altitude, and you're back to following the purple line. Lovely. Let me recenter this as well. All right, so now that we've got that. Rocks. Oh, they both load up the same thing. Okay. So, if I bring up, not this. Navigraph. 111.15. One, one, um, oh, that's nav one standby. No, bring it back up. Transfer. Okay. Where do we actually see what our active radio frequency is, though? I don't know. <laughs> now, that's for the ILS. What I'm going to do on Radio 2, um... Is there another one? Listed nearby on this chart? No. There's a non-directional one at 322, but... Alright, I'm just going to get both of these. I don't think we've got auto land or anything, but typically... There we go. Oh, the active frequency is up there. Okay. Not very big, but it is available. Whew. Tried to look at the actual manual from the plane, but it's the older version without the touchscreens. But nods and but Yeah, I, that's, that's the thing. These glass, glass cockpits are obviously the future. And they're amazing. 
Um, but they do have a bit of a, a bit more of a learning curve, and there is something very nice and convenient about the old like pneumatic ones with like everything sort of visible and and touchable right over there, you know. My favorite thing about the um, the premium pack of this game is the fact that they've got the the old school Cessna 172 in it, as opposed to the G1000. Although the base version does have the old school version of the 152, so you're you're basically already had it. How the hell do you see out the front? So you don't really... You don't really see out the front. You know, you can scooch up a little. Uh, uh. I mean, it's very pretty here. But then you can't see your dials. So a lot of times what I would do in uh, in a lot of flight stuff is I'd sort of move up like this. And then I'd sort of pan down so I could still sort of see some things. Although the top of our instruments is hidden by our, uh, our little autopilot bank over here. Yeah, I know the clouds are nice, huh? Yeah, let's pop outside again for a sec. Close this. The clouds are gorgeous. Somewhere down down below all this is England. Mm -hmm. Now, hopefully, we'll actually get descent instructions. Because if you saw my flight uh, where I did do some IFR stuff, um, a short IFR flight, you know, we were told to climb to, what was it, like 12,000 feet? And then we flew right over our destination airport at 12,000 feet. And we're like, ATC, please? Now, since we have this tuned, I would hope that when we run to the glide scope, it'll come live on its own. I don't think I have to change the CDI mode. On some planes, I don't. You, you know, you keep yourself in an FMS mode for this all the time. You never switch to VOR1 or anything like that. How's our fuel going? All right, we got fuel flow. Was that on the bigger screen that was expanded? Do we have, like, do we have a non-digital display of our fuel amount anywhere? Fuel is on your left. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Holy shit, yeah. Now, part of it might be, woof, that is chunky right now. Part of it might be that we are potentially, you know, being inefficient because of a high RPMs. Because remember, when we set up our fuel load, we set up enough fuel based on the map. Um, is it just me? Does the ATC not know that I mean to be landing over here? I mean, it's got my flight plan. Did we never tune to London Center? Oh. We've been we've been a little bit busy, haven't we? Listen, uh um London City. Well, first, let's get the ATIS. Must have happened while we were so busy doing other things. Two niner decimal nine or four. All right, luckily it's pretty close, since we still don't know how to tune this one. Yeah, well, that's going to take a while, because we got to descend a whole bunch. All right, I'm just going to go into vertical speed mode here. And uh, descend at. Um, hello? There it is. Uh, 2,000 feet per minute. Also, that means we got 10 minutes before we get where we want to go. I'm going to throttle like all the way back. Landing gear. Landing gear. Landing gear. Landing gear. Landing gear. Get up, landing gear. 
Oh, because I'm I'm full idle. That's why it's complaining. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah, shut up. I got you, buddy. Oh, I can have bearing pointers on. Okay, no, there we go. I have one, no data. Okay, so that'll probably come alive at that at some point. Right over there. Okay, that's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, two thousand feet per minute is not that quick. Uh, yeah, so we've reached our last waypoint because we just blew past the airport. So it's just flying level right now. Um, what was the active uh, base runway 9? Or runway 9, left base, so we're going to be doing a pattern sort of that way. I mean, right now we're just sort of flying straight. Oh, fucking hell with the phone. Set this to do not disturb. It's probably just a spam call. You think only Nav 2 got tuned? Can I open it from clicking here? That's so weird. So we have to split it, hide whatever is going on. That's when we get the, um, this. Oh. Not calm. There, 111.15 over there. As like I said, it'd be nice to see somewhere else on the screen, like have a confirmation that that's actually uh, booked in here. Okay, um, let's uh, or a heading. So what we're going to do is we're going to... Oh my god, I can't, I can't turn the heading by ones. I forgot. We've lost our ability to do ones for our heading. I can't change my course indicator? Oh, probably because it's still on the GPS mode. Oh, and I can't... Oh, and there it goes. Yeah, localizer 1. Stick this in. Now can I change my course? Is it, is it slave to the heading for some reason? No, it's independent. This still has the, um, the FMS course. No, now it's switched to a 92. Yeah, I know I have heading select. That's that's not what I'm uh, concerned about over here. I'm trying to say uh, for the uh, for the sort of the, the nav, the vor. Um, I want to say what radial I want to intersect. switched to 92 at some point is it because it's it's picked up the ILS signal and it knows that that's the heading um what is the actual runway heading actually 93 degrees that might be why that changed to a 92 there but I'm still weirded out there must be a way like let's say I didn't want to fly with the computer right and the GPS if I just want to fly like vor to vor kind of style um you you would you have to be able to select the the course for the the vor mode. I know we're flying away, but I'm still descending. <laughs> like, we got we got shit to do first. Whoops.
it's definitely if this definitely picking up the ILS so that's probably where the 92 came in um, and maybe because it's locked into the ILS I can't change it now but I couldn't change it a second ago either oh it might have been the uh, the reverse course yeah, probably, because it was probably this plus 180 degrees, right? So it was probably, it was saying 272. It was the reverse course of the ILS. That's why I can't change it, because it knows there's an ILS thing happening. I think that's all that is. Okay, so I'm going to go and set that to off, so we've only got the one. So the course we want is to our right, which is to be expected, because I'm south of the airport, heading west right now. What we're going to do once we get to closer to our target altitude, I'm going to turn north, intersect this course, um, and, uh, then we can just follow that in and that's going to be okay. All right. Let's, uh, let's bring up the chart again. I'll, I'll bring it up so you guys can see it as well. Um, cause we're going to be coming in over here. So about a 93, it says 92, 92, 93, whatever. I don't know. Magnetic drift. It's a little different. Um, and we are looking to encounter 2000 feet or higher. That's probably going to be okay. So if we we're at 2000 feet, we'd encounter the glide scope 3.4 nautical miles out. If we start at 3000 feet. Um, we'll just interact, intersect it a little sooner. It's 93 degree down slope. No, that's not the angle of the descent because that would be, you know, straight down. So no, it's just repeating the 93, the compass directions over here. Does it have like an angle for the descent rate in here? I don't know how to read these charts in every single way. Yes. D Daniel, we, I was just talking about that. That we intersected this. Just talking about this. Because when I had this, I could see it's on both sides and everything. I was just talking about intersecting things. Like, are you saying something else? Oh, it's got a 5.5 degrees listed somewhere. And that, what is, a, what is a normal sort of profile? Because I know it's supposed to be steep here. I don't know what the normal descent profile to like another airport. Anyway, uh, if we uh, missed approach, climb straight ahead to 2,000 feet. Then turn left or wait until directed. But uh, yeah, all right. Still descending. So we got about, I mean, five minutes we'd be at zero. Oh, that's what I was going to check. What's the elevation around here? Uh, standard is around three degrees. Okay. Excellent. Yeah, right there. Um, descent angle. Thank you. 5.5. Um, elevation, 19 feet. Okay. Now, again, over here, because we haven't figured out how to tune the barometer on this, I think it's the thing down below, which is in-op. So we're not going to get that, but it'll be damn close, which only 0 0.02 um, uh, pressure deviation. It's not going to be that big of a deal. We could double check over here. but So I don't know what the actual touchdown number is going to be. I think... I think we'll be a little lower over here. We might be we might be around zero, actually, when we touch down, weirdly enough. Yeah, I was going to say about 20 feet difference. Yeah, it's not going to be very substantial. I think it'll be about zero when we touch down, and it'll be 19 feet over there. So we'll, uh, you know, that's going to be the least of our problems. Let's be honest here. Least of our problems. <laughs> so we're 20 miles away. I think actually we can take the turn now, because we're still descending in, I think, a way that's going to be perfectly okay. So I'm going to go ahead and make a right turn. Now, again, I'm on nav mode. I would like to be able to punch in, you know, an exact number, but apparently we're still moving by tens. For reasons. I don't know. Uh, well, I guess we're basically going to be going straight north. We're going to be going at two degrees, because we ain't got no other option. But that's what we're going to do. I'm going to go and arrest the rate of descent a little. I mean, we're already going to slow down when we hit 3,000. Um, oh, shit. I went faster than expected. My bad. I was just trying to go to 1,000 feet here. Um, and let's say throttle to compensate. But I don't know, actually. Slower is fine. Am I passing over Heathrow? Wow, I'm going to break so many laws here. Is this Heathrow? Yeah, EGLL. Oh, yeah, we're super violating some airspace. That's fine. Maybe we'll get to see lots of planes outside. <laughs> oh, oh, I love the south of England. Oh, my God. It's just breathtaking, isn't it? Oh, yeah, all right. Mm -hmm. Dun, 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 dun. 
Okay, and what I can probably do now is go ahead with something like this. Really, I'd like to dial in 45 degrees, but apparently that's not going to be in the cards. And we'll try to encounter our little nav line. I think I can go into approach mode now. What it'll do when it intersects the, uh, the localizer, then it'll turn to follow. And when we hit the glide scope, it should also hitch along it, I think. All right, there you go. We're still on heading right now, and we're currently still on vertical speed right now, but it's ready, it's armed to lock onto the localizer and the glide scope. And yeah, we're totally going to do a, a buzz of, um, of, of Heathrow here, and I would love to be able to show you that. I would love to be able to show you that. But unfortunately, we're not going to be able to see much. Yeah, fuel's awfully low. It's lower than it should be. I think probably because we couldn't really figure out our optimal settings with um, uh, with, with our RPMs and things. It looks like we're going to be okay to land. What I might do, just to make sure we don't run out of fuel literally on the final approach, which would be really stupid and annoying, I'm just going to give us a tiny bit more. Just to make sure we don't have, like, last-minute power outage. Oh, things are just starting to show up. Look, you can just barely see it. We're just getting to the bottom of the cloud bank. Oh, this landing's going to be great, guys. I can tell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know what to look for uh, in the search, but we'll, we'll take another search to see what it is. But the only buttons I've interacted with on the keyboard is the pause and the, well, the end button, which I also have mapped to a thing over here. I think are the only button and arrow keys, I guess. I mean, we tried tapping shift before. Didn't do it, so I'm not sure. There you go. The plane is blank banking. You can see it's now in localizer mode. So it's now going to continue to fly sort of on a diagonal until it interacts, intersects this green line. And then we will be flying directly towards the runway. Um, we're going to level off at 3,000 feet soon. Oh, we have actually detected the glide scope. We, the glide scope is above us, which of course we 100% expect. So what we're going to do is we're going to fly level at 3,000 until we run into it. And then we're going to lock on completely. Um, I heard my name. Cleared to land, runway 9. <laughs> okay, this is totally going to work out. We're still 17 miles out. Oh, there we go. Turning on the localizer. Oh, it's still gray and hazy. Fog is thick as pea soup. Actually, we're just about to enter another bank of clouds here, too. I don't know if you can, like, see the edges of some of it on there. Oh, it's going to be a damp, damp, damp lining. So one of the things we talked about air pressure earlier, like at this point, should I be dial in, you know, the pressure? They talk about depressurize the cabin before landing. So I'm assuming this would be part of our before landing checklist, which we don't actually have checklist here. We'd be dialing this way back to basically zero. We probably should have started that sooner. Probably as we cross something like 10,000 feet or something would probably be a good time for us to check and change the, the cabin pressure. There we go. Bring that down to zero anyway. I don't know if that does anything, but... Okay, we're level at 3,000. The glide scope's still above us, which makes sense because we're still 15 nautical miles away. We're expecting to hit our glide scope maybe at about 5 miles out. Um, speed's a little on the low side here, actually, because we are level. Let me give us a little bit more oomph. I'm also going to go to full thro prop mode. And you can see now, now, ow, now that we're not super high up, our prop is actually in the range we expect. So that's all it was. When we were at high altitudes, the uh, prop speed was just scaling way faster than we would think. I believe that the idle for the landing, they do go to high idle speed. So we will be doing that as well. And I'm going to keep a more aggressive prop mode here, just in case there needs to be a go around. I mean, we don't actually need the props to be going hard and heavy for the actual landing, but if we have to do a go-around, we kind of need full power. On the other hand, what I'm going to be doing is basically slamming all three um, throttle levers to the front, should something like that happen. So what I'm going to do, now that we are... Well, 95 is, is fine there. I am going to go and resync the heading in case I... Don't... I super didn't click on the screen, buddy. Wait. I 
How did I open that? With one click. How did I open up the, uh, the keypad screen with one click? Yeah, the center of the heading button, which I just clicked now, just sets the heading bug. No, it's like... I'm assuming I'm clicking through to something over here that's causing the keypad to come up. But I don't know what it is. All right, well, let's not worry about it. We got we got to focus on the landing here. Um, let me bring this back a tiny bit. All right, seven miles out. Glide scope soon. Yeah, I definitely want to start dropping speed. In fact, we can probably go back to deploying some flaps as well. Um, guys, good news. The shard. You can see you can see Big Ben and the House of Parliament. We're, we're going we're going over. Uh, some some river of some kind. I don't think it's a very important one. Um, there might be there might be a bridge over here that's got a well known name. I don't know. Some sort of and you know some towers or something. Maybe if you squint really hard, you can see it. We're gonna have to do this landing again at some point when we're you know not focused on just trying to figure out how to run the plane. There we go. Glide scope is almost engaged here. And flaps down and throttle up a little bit because we're losing a little too much speed. You can see sort of. Bounce and bubble a little when you hit that. And any second now, there we go. We're now in glide scope mode. So now it's going to try to follow it. I can see the uh, the runway on this screen. And, uh, yeah, can't can't really see it in real life. But we're going to go for the uh, the landing anyway. We don't give a shit. Um, all right, speed, keep it low. We're still five miles out. I'm not going to put the gears out quite yet. Oh, wow. Yeah, I've got my, my throttle set to full idle, which is why we're getting spammed up landing, landing gear. I don't know if I have um, spoilers. I feel like that was a little fast for the flap deployment. But we need to do something. And if I do want to beat it off more speed. Okay, I'm going to drop landing gear now. Oh, I meant to look up the landing speeds for this plane. Ha! Ah! Now, we don't have auto land or anything. We have radar altitude. Uh, uh, that's great. So, we actually know how high above the ground we are over here, which is lovely. We're still following the glide scope for now, which is great. Um, report runway in sight. Oh, yeah, there it is. Oh, I'm low. There's three red lights. That's interesting. Oh, I am below the glide scope a little. Okay, let's give it full um, full prop, full idle. Oh, man, I can barely see the lights, but technically it is in sight. Gear is down. We can... From outside the plane, we'll double check. Yep, everything's there. Everything's deployed pretty much as much as we can do it. I'd like to pause and ask you guys if you want to do the landing from inside or outside of the plane, but we know that the uh, the pause bouton is a little bit weird. So when I hit about 500 feet, I'll probably grab manual control. Two whites, two reds, looking good. I think we can probably... Um, our landing speed's probably around 100 knots, I expect. Landing speed 109? Ooh, okay. So we're basically there. All right. I can definitely report the runway in sight well before minimums. All right. Autopilot off. Speed maybe a tiny bit low. Trying to add... Ooh. God, this is a steep approach. Do not like. Do not like. N. Nope. Come on. Actually, touch ground. Oof. 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 Oh, shit. I didn't have my feet. I didn't have my three feet on the puddle, uh, paddles in the right place. I was like, oh, yeah, I got to have my feet on the uh, brake. Break? Spoiler? Break? I, 
I put the uh, I put the engines in the full reverse. I hit the button for spoilers. Not that I think we had them. And I was just smashing the brakes. And they're like, no, no, you keep going. Thank you for flying air quill. Wow, London is hard to land in. Um, what we're gonna do? Can I set? Can I set just an approach? No, not from the main menu. In the X plane, you can. Here, I could fast forward to where we need to go. But yeah, I didn't have my feet on the thing until I was like touching down. I'm like, fucking hell! And then we went sideways because I wasn't actually on the uh, the foot riders because I, you know, I have two modes. Either I'm using my hands or my feet. Never the two shall miss, or it shall, shall be combined. Um, yeah, because we can start in the air. We want to do that again. Uh, you're right over here somewhere, aren't you? Parliament, Tower Bridge, Tower London. Oh, right there. If I set this as a rival, and we're gonna try this again. Hold on a sec. Make it clear, because I, I would like I would like to try a second time. Um, set as departure over here. Okay. And as far as I know, I can't change the altitude. I think it's going to be facing us directly north, and for some reason it hard codes in this altitude. And I'm not sure if there's another way to tune it. I... Th Are you sure about the 109 landing speed? Even on a steep descent? Because it felt, um... Because I was below 109, and it still really ballooned when I tried to just level out. That's what Google says? Okay. Hmm. I may, may, and I mean, first of all, I probably did 17 things wrong. That's part of it. Um, I'm wondering if there's a slight change when you're taking such a steep deploy uh, approach as well. Yeah, we were we were below the speed though. We were below the speed. Yeah, there is um I think there's a reverse mode. But I, I did bring the throttle all the way down to where that might be. I'm gonna try that one more time. Now we're gonna start low, and I don't know if anything's gonna be tuned right, and we're gonna be facing the wrong direction. I might need to start further away so that we could actually, like, get the plane in the right attitude to do this again. But that was my first attempt at ever landing with that plane. Ever landing there. I'm going to make sure to have my feet on the pedals this time. That'll help. Because actually, it was a little floaty, and it may have been a little bit of a hard like, actual touch. But overall, the landing was... would have been fine if I had my feet on the rudder pedals. It would have been fine. Okay, close this a sec. I would love to pause. My god, we're going fast right now. I'd love to pause and get our bearings. Well, we can we can just, uh, we can just fly around a second. It's gonna be okay. So... Split, then hit here. Uh, punch in one 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 five. Transfer to live. There we go. Um. Then go here. Then say, hey, I'd like nav one. Thank you very much. Okay. Really weird user interface. Oh, thank you, Bale. I can... I'll have to read that after. I think that's the airport there. Which is fine. Oh, didn't it say it was starting us off at 1,600 feet? Or at 7,000 feet? What the fudge? I'm gonna turn around. Um, well, I'm curious. If 
I start dialing this now. Now it's back to one degree at a time, you guys. No idea why. We reload the plane, it goes to one, and at some point, something happens that makes it go into tens. But we haven't figured out what. Yeah, it said 1,600 for... Yeah, 1,640. 1,640 feet. But we're at 7,000 feet. It's still pre-release. Maybe there's still something that's being justified. I don't know. Um, and I'm going to ask for a descent. Say 1,000 feet per minute. That's going to be fine. Um, flight director mode is on, which is good. Overspeeding, because I still have... Because I wasn't sure where it was going to start us off with regards to the throttle or anything like that. And we're descending quickly. So I had everything set at the top. But I don't want to pause. That's the problem. I knew we weren't going to start off configured properly. But... Oops, come back. Um, but I didn't want to pause. Click for the current heading. Thank you very much. Um, the 180. There we go. We got Heathrow in front of us. I'm sure we're not supposed to, but we're not following any procedure. That's okay. Um, heading. So autopilot on. Good. Oh, we need the yaw damper on or we get an air, a warning about that. That's going to be okay. You're currently in altitude mode, but I'm going to tell you, well, I'm going to program in. We're going to do the same thing. We'll, we'll target about um, 3,000 here. And yeah, just stay in no, vertical speed mode. Drop by 1,000. Altitude set to 1,000. We're dropping. Our speed's good. That's okay there. Other than try not to set the engine on fire, I'm not going to be worried too much about this. I've got the prop and condition uh, to the maximum, uh, which is a little early for that, but let's let's try to manage our sort of brain time that we've got access to. Um, this is alive. We're going the wrong way for it to actually bring up the um, like any glide scope type of stuff. Well, we're it, it even has this. So really, all we need to do at this point is turn around. 3,000 feet coming in. Okay. We're going to make a right turn. And fly north for a little bit. What the? Wrong knob. And we're going by ones. We don't know why, but we're going by ones. Which is sometimes what I want, sometimes not. We did land. The problem is I didn't... The, the final problem, ultimately, is I didn't have my feet on the rudder pedals. So after we landed, we veered off the runway. We would have been fine if I just had my feet on the rudders so that we didn't veer off the one, runway immediately after landing and go sploosh into the Thames. It's funny that it was such a little thing in the end that got us. So, what I'm going to do is do a 135. That's programmed in. We're about 11 nautical miles away. We're going to be coming down at an angle to hit, presumably, our course, which is, interestingly enough, did I, was there something else I had to do? Yeah, CDI source localizer 1. There we go. Like, hold on, there's something I'm missing. Oh, it's to our left. Wait, am I south? Seriously? Oh, shit. Never mind. Come back up. Accidentally twiddled this knob. That's the problem when the camera moves around. You gotta like, keep moving your mouse so that you're on the right... Oh, no. I still want to go to 45 degrees. Alright, glide scope's above us, which is to be expected because we're far away. Now we're heading towards localizer, which is great. I'm just going to let it um, level off, then we'll go back into approach mode. And then we'll actually get to look outside our window and see some stuff. Alright, good. Hey, we can actually see things! Airport somewhere over here? Uh, no, sorry, it's going to be... We're going to hit the line and then go east at that point.
London is calling. There we go. Localizer locked. We're just going to be waiting to intersect the glide scope now. I'm going to go ahead and deploy flaps, which is going to cause the plane to, to bubble a little bit and then resettle. Throttle is still fairly low, but I'm going to go back up to about 25% on the throttle, which isn't the same as 25% torque. Radio the tower. F it. They know we're coming. Landing gear deploy. Gonna burn off a little bit more speed, but that's actually still okay. We're definitely doing full flaps for these land this landing here. Okay. Waiting to hit that glide scope. We are lined up for the runway, which we can see over there. Water on both sides. Let's try not to go for a splash this time. Feet are on the rudder. Yeah, maybe we could, we could wait until the last minute to go to full flaps. But I'm actually concerned about the, the sort of, you know, when you sort of float up when you deploy the flaps. I'm worried that that's going to mess me up too much. So I'm just going to go to full flaps now, even though it's silly. Speed up a little. Oh, we're pitching down, which actually is going to speed us up. I think we just engaged the glide scope. That is indeed the case. What I should do at this point is dial in 2000 on the altimeter because our go around is uh, head straight out until you hit 2000, then make a left turn or as directed. But whatever, we're just committing to the landing, whether it makes sense or not. Okay, pull back on the speed. Easily throttling back. Although I think we can basically go to full idle. It's such a short runway. I'm at full idle on the uh, throttle here. It is glide slope. Yes, yeah, not glide scope. Uh, it's like, I think of it as the visual, so I think of it as a scope over here, but of course it's a slope that you're following. Now, alright, that's below what was reported as a landing speed. Now, part of it depends, of course, on how much weight we're hauling as well. Although that would have been reset when we loaded it, so I don't know where we're at anymore. Oh, I didn't change the weather to make it easier on myself. It, the weather's going to have zero impact on the landing. I changed the weather so you guys could see it. The landing is going to be exactly as difficult as before. I mean, the only thing that would make it easier uh, or harder is the amount of wind, but the visibility doesn't really matter here. Okay, two whites, two reds. We're approaching 500. Go, so I have control. fast, but I, I can't throttle back anymore. A little low, but I'm trying to give us as much runway as possible. There you go. Second time's the charm. I felt completely in control. Now, left. Oh my god. It's still really hard to... Um... There you go. Until all the wheels are on the ground, it's still... I feel really hard to, um, to steer this plane. You know what? We shouldn't have skipped the taxiing because I think I would have gotten a bit better of a sense of how much rudder I need on this bad boy. But there you go. Taking all the knowledge we had. Where's the taxi on this? Like, if I if I was in communication with the ATC, um, oh, okay, there's the taxiway. Oh, it's literally it's literally at the end. Oh wow. It's literally at the end, basically. I guess that makes sense. There's not a lot of space to play with over here. Come on. Oh, on the ground, I think I'm supposed to go... There we go. Bring this down. I think that puts my uh, props and other controls into sort of beta mode for the ground here. 
Nope, 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 this way. Like this. A little toe break. They don't go into the drink again. We've been there once before. We don't need it again. I guess I could, um... There's no way that they'd be like, okay, you know what we need you to do now is drive all the way down the runway in the opposite direction of the active behavior. I mean, they don't really have a taxiway out here, but I mean, they sort of do. All right. Whoa, 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 whoa. You taxi down the runway? No. So you land, get to the end, turn around, and taxi all the way back? I mean, it is a narrow strip of ground. But how busy is this airport? It can't... I guess it's not, like, insanely hectic. Because every single landing takes, you know, ten times longer. Because there's a landing itself, and then you've got to wait for the entire taxi process. Oops. I get confused between which foot goes in which direction. I still haven't, like, internalized that. This whole steering by toes, also my flaps should be up, is too much. Now, on a regular taxiway, I think you're not supposed to generally go above 30. But I think if you're taxiing on a runway, is it 50 or 60, the speed limit? I feel like it's a little bit, uh, it's higher, but I don't remember what the general rule there is. Basically, charter GA for those heading near Heathrow. It's not usually, it's not that busy because of Heathrow. Oh, all right. So there's plenty of time for doing nonsense like this. Did you imagine if I'd practice landing in this plane one time? Because how that. Come on, that landing looked pretty decent. I'm not going to say it was the softest, most buttery one. But honestly, with the descent profile here, I don't think I'll ever get that point. But it would have been, like, pretty convincingly impressive, right? If I had practiced this plane one time, if I had practiced the approach into London uh, City one time, I would have impressed the hell out of you guys. But I didn't. So I didn't. <laughs> Um, okay, it's going to do this thing again. Look, if we follow the uh, the actual taxiway indicators, we're going to murder several people. You ready for it? So this, this is how we're supposed to get into our assigned parking place. Okay, I'm just going to follow the arrows. I'm just going to swing my arms like this. And if you get in my way, it's not my fault. <laughs> In fact, I think actually um, I should have gone ignored the arrows. I think I should have done this and then sort of done a turnaround, but I don't know if I can. It would have been the guys with the pushback cart probably responsible for doing it for me. That guy just got Indiana Jones. Exactly, right? Parking brake engaged. Can I get to the cutoff from here? Hey, I did, didn't I? Yeah, that's in the fuel cutoff, because this doesn't do anything. It certainly sounds like the engines are off. Hey, why didn't it end my flight? Oh, I also have to uh, power off all the batteries and stuff. There it is. Success! Mm-hmm. <laughs> Actually, I'm very happy with the level of progression we did there between those two landings. We learned a thing, 
and then applied it on the on the retry and it was gorgeous.